In this short video, we're going to learn about one-sided limits. We call our informal definition of a regular two-sided limit. Uh, we had to assume that f is defined whenever x is near the number a, and we said that the limit as x approaches a of f of x is the number l. If we can make the values of f of x arbitrarily close to l, by restricting x to be sufficiently close to a on either side, but not equal to a. It's the fact that we have on either side that makes it a two-sided limit. So for one-sided limits, what we're going to do is we're going to have a left limit or a right limit, and we're going to replace the phrase on either side with the phrase to the left of A. That will give us a definition for the left limit. For the right limit, we'll replace that phrase on either side with to the right of A. So then we have informal definitions of a left limit and a right limit. So the difference is, is that F only needs to be defined when x is near a and to one side of a. And then we're going to restrict uh, our x to be sufficiently close to and to one side of a. Otherwise, the definition is the same idea. So let's look at the difference in the notation. When we have the regular two-sided limit, we just say the limit as x approaches a, f of x equals l. We have seen that before. For a left-sided limit, we would say the limit as x approaches a from the left. It's this superscript here on the a that tells us we're going to approach a from the left this minus sign as a superscript. For the right limit, we would have the limit as x approaches a from the right, f of x equals l. So we have a plus sign as a superscript on a. That indicates that we approach the number a from the right. Let's look at an example. We're going to look at a piecewise defined function. Piecewise defined functions, remember, they have more than one rule, depending upon what part of the domain you are taking your x value from. So in this case, our function is a quadratic function, f of x equals negative x one half x squared plus x plus three halves if x is less than one, or it just has the formula y equals x if x is greater than or equal to one. And so we can use the graph here to help us evaluate the limits. We see that if we approach one from the left side, I'm on this branch of the graph and the y coordinates approach the number two. On the other hand, if I approach one from the right side of the graph, then I'm on the branch that's the line, and I can see that the y values are going to, or the y coordinates of the points on that graph are going to approach one. So we would say the limit as x approaches one from the right of f of x is one, while the limit as x approaches one from the left of f of x equals two. Let's look at another example, which is a piecewise defined function. And let's start by looking at a number uh, 
where there is no break. Let's look at uh, the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the left and from the right. So approaching negative 2 from the left or from the right, I'm on the same part of the graph. And whether I come from the left or from the right, the y coordinates are getting closer and closer to 4. So the left limit is the same as the right limit, and that equals 4. However, there is a break when x equals negative 1. I can see that if I approach negative 1 from the left, the y coordinates on the graph are approaching the number 3. However, if I approach negative 1 from the right, the y coordinates approach negative 1. So I would say the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the right of f of x is negative 1. The limit as x approaches negative 1 from the left of f of x is 3. Okay. And notice that the function value when x equals negative 1 equals 1, but we don't care when we're calculating the limit what the function value is. Uh, when we reach that target x value, we only care about what happens when I get close to it. In this case, close to the, from the left or from the right. So here's an important fact that we're going to be using a lot, not just in calculus one, but throughout calculus courses, is that the limit as x approaches a of f of x exists if and only if the left limit equals the right limit. Let me fix something here quickly. All right, fixed. For our last example, we're going to use the greatest integer function. Maybe you've not seen the greatest integer function before. The way we write it is using a set of double brackets. And we define it in the following way. That the greatest integer function of x is the greatest integer less than or equal to x. Now, it may help us to think about the number line. The greatest integer function of x is the first integer equal to or to the left of x on the number line. So when we have positive numbers, it's a little bit simpler. Uh, you kind of just chop off. If it's not an integer, you just chop off the uh, decimal portion. So the greatest integer value of 2.1 is just 2. The greatest integer value of 3.9 is just 3. The negative numbers, we want to think about the, the, the number line. If I say, what is the greatest integer value of negative 1.1? Well, on the number line, going to the left of negative 1.1 is negative Two, that's the first integer to the left of negative 1.1. And the, for the greatest integer value of negative 3.99, we would get uh, negative 4. When we graph the greatest integer function, we get what we call a step function. So, it has infinitely many small pieces. Each piece is a line segment. It's a horizontal line segment. 
So using this graph, let's calculate some limits. The limit as x approaches 2 from the left means that we are on this part of the graph. That's going to be 1. The limit as x approaches 2 from the right, so I'm going to the right of 2, means I'm over here on that part of the graph. That's going to be 2. And since the left limit does not equal the right limit, the limit as x approaches 2 of the greatest integer value of x does not exist. I hope you have found this video on one-sided limits useful.